Welcome. It's me, Aaron the Artist. A while ago, I made a bunch of posts in a few different places asking you folks if you had any questions for me, and I didn't really think that much of it. I didn't think I'd get so many questions, to be quite honest with you. I figured I'd probably just make a one minute short with the answers, but there's just way too many questions to do that, so we're doing a big boy video instead. Thanks a lot to everybody who took the time to ask me a question, and I want to get right to those now. But before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about what I'm drawing here. This illustration is the first time in about a year that I've drawn something in this style. A long time ago, I used to do these very sort of story-driven illustrations with a character doing something in a scene, kind of like a snapshot from an animation or something like that. Then one day, I just went a completely different direction and I started doing portraits, and then stylized portraits, and then character design, and now we're back doing these story pieces again. This particular piece is inspired by a gorgeous bit of pixel art by Becky C on Twitter. I saw it and I just thought, I've got to try something like that, so here we are. I won't say too much more about it, because it's kind of fun if you figure out what the illustration will be as I do it, but let's get on with those questions. Now there's quite a lot of questions, so... I'm just going to run through them continuously without that much pause. Soccer Vibes asks three different questions. First one, what do you like to do when you're looking for an inspiration? The main thing that I do is I look for art in a different style to mine on Pinterest or on Twitter. Mostly Twitter these days. I just browse around looking for things that are different to what I normally do until I find something that's cool. A lot of times I end up inspired by pixel art pieces, but sometimes it's photos or little animations. I'll just see that special something that gives me a great idea, or something new to try. Second question. Are you listening to anything while drawing? Is it music, podcasts, or something else? I don't listen to podcasts really, except for the Trash Taste podcast which is a podcast that was originally about anime, but it's kind of evolved into these three guys just talking about whatever, and it's pretty entertaining. Other than that, I have a pretty bad addiction to video essays on YouTube. I'll find videos about art, but also more often videos about game design, about animation, about lore. I got addicted to those history of speedrunning videos that Summoning Salt does. Those are great. Third question. What do you like most about digital art? Well, I love the control that you have over the colours. I prefer doing sketching traditionally, but I've always been fairly amateur at mixing colours with watercolour, which is what I like to use traditionally. I can never get the exact colours that I want, and you just can't really change the colours once they're down. I think traditional art requires a much stronger grasp of colour theory than I've really got, honestly. So digital art means that I can make a lot of mistakes with the colour, experiment, and edit until it looks right. Do you have an artist who is your main inspiration? I don't really have one artist. My art style changes a lot depending on what I feel like doing, so I've been inspired by lots of people at different times. My main inspiration these days is definitely the Studio Ghibli movies. The storytelling type illustration you see me making here gets a massive amount of inspiration from there for sure. Next we've got a question from Suki Shami K. I'm so sorry if I've mispronounced these names, by the way, I have no idea how to pronounce some of these, but I, I do my best and I'm so sorry if it doesn't work out. Anyway, the question is, what moment exactly made you decide that you wanted to become an artist for real? Was it a traumatic experience, feeling a certain way, looking at something, or anything else? Well, for me it wasn't really anything that dramatic, but probably at least two different things. When I was a kid I used to love the Final Fantasy series. I grew up on Final Fantasy IX, which my cousin showed me when I was about 10, and I was obsessed with that game. After the first time I played it all the way through, I had this new passion for making my own worlds and characters. For ages I wanted to be a character designer for video games. But when I got to about 18, I convinced myself that art wasn't really a good idea, and I went to university and I studied philosophy. I did an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, and a PhD in philosophy. Then I realised that the whole academic thing wasn't really for me. After that, I started drawing again. By that time, the whole art community online was a completely different thing. 
than compared to when I was a kid. It was suddenly way easier to get your art scene online, so I picked it back up again. Galaxy Gato's got a whole bunch of questions. First question. What would you say is the most important exercise for getting better at art? I've tried loads of different things. What I saw the most improvement doing was basically just grinding traditional drawing skills. A couple of years ago, I drew 10 portraits in pencil every single day until I had 100 portraits. And I only let myself use a pencil, an eraser, and purely freehand methods. Doing that taught me so much about how to create accurate drawings, and I've been able to pretty much crutch on that a drawing ability to improve all the other things that I find more difficult. So I'd say my answer is the boring answer. If you want to get better at drawing, learn to make realistic and accurate drawings by just doing it over and over and over again. Second question, what about animation? Honestly, I have absolutely no idea because I've never made an animation. I do want to make one one day. I'd actually love to start doing it real soon. I just need a bit more time to sit and learn how to do it. Third question, what's my favorite animation that I've seen? That's an interesting one. My favorite animated film is Grave of the Fireflies by Studio Ghibli. But that's because I think the whole film is beautiful. The animation, the story, the direction, everything. But the best actual animation that I've seen is Avatar The Last Airbender. I just love the animated fight scenes in that show. Bethany W's got two questions for me. First question, who are your favorite artists? <laughs> well, how much time do you have? I mean, I love the Ghibli art. I love certain styles of Final Fantasy art. And those are my absolute favorites. But I also love Wallop and Navigavi and Rhino Tuna. Gooey is is cool. Jamila Knopf is cool. I have no idea if I'm saying any of those names right either. I'm so sorry. There are so many different artists that I love. It's, it's pretty hard to pick just, just one or two. But if I had to narrow it down, I'd say the Studio Ghibli art and then the kind of Final Fantasy art that you see on screen right now. Second question. Do you do any other forms of art? Not really. I've done a bit of pixel art in the past, and I'd like to do more of it. And I'd like to do some animation too, like I said, but I mainly just draw and paint. I don't do anything like play the piano or anything, even though I wish I could do that. Kevin Pezos has got two questions. What was the first art piece you made that you genuinely felt good about, or that helped you find your style? Hmm, I don't know. I think my style shifts around a fair bit. So there probably isn't just one piece. And I'm not sure I'll ever reach a point where I'm just happy with my art. I always feel like there's something else I could be doing, something else I could improve, a different direction I could go in. Second question is, would I be willing to critique Kevin's artwork? Sure. If you hop on into my Discord, I'll leave a link for you in my description. You can post your works in the art critiques thread there, and I'll give you some feedback best I can. There's also a bunch of other nice folks in there who can help you out. But if I know you're coming, I'll keep an eye out for your post. Hopefully see you there. Next question was asked by Create Ivory. How did you become an artist? I'm not really sure. I mean, I just drew a lot and posted it online. Eventually, I started taking commissions by advertising on Instagram. I did that for a couple of years. Then at some point, I made videos with my art. I think I started off doing that on TikTok, and then I moved to YouTube. And here we are. Awkward Silence asks, How are you doing today? I'm good. A bit tired, but I'm good. King331 asks, What are you? And the answer's got to be, Well, I am lots and lots of atoms in the shape of a person. I'm not sure what else I am, though. Laz C asked me, What's the better digital drawing app? I love Procreate. It's cheap, it's super powerful, it's easy to use, they update it all the time, and most importantly for me, it's a one-time purchase. You pay once, you've got it forever. There's no predatory subscription service like a lot of other art programs. Yeah, it's great. Sora asked me, for how long have you been drawing? I think altogether, probably about 10 years. Random guy OTI asked me, what got you into art? That's an easy question, Final Fantasy. Orbiting Ash asked me, what helped you shape your art style? Hmm. What my art is now is pretty much a combination of artists who I love, like the Ghibli and Final Fantasy stuff, 
together with habits that are left over from earlier times. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that I picked up when I was obsessed with Willop, and that's probably still creeps into my art. The other thing that's probably in my art style at the moment is straight up tutorials. Things that I learned from Mark Brunette or from Mark Crilly. Things that I picked up from art books. There's obviously a little bit of my own personal experience in there too, but it's harder to pin that down exactly. WoW asks me a really hard question. What were the stepping stones you took to get a semi-realistic art style? And that's a pretty funny question because you can see right now that what I'm doing isn't semi-realism at all. But I have done semi-realism a lot in the past. I think it's one of the most difficult art styles to get right. Realism is very much about technical accuracy. Do you have the skill to make this portrait look like that person? It takes patience and practice, but it's, it's doable if you put in the work. Stylized art, like I'm doing now, is a lot more about pretty shapes. Of course, there has to be some accuracy to it, but you can get away with a lot of inaccuracy if the result is kind of interesting. Semi-realism is this incredibly thin tightrope between the two. If you fall off the rope, either too far towards realism or too far towards stylized art, you get that uncanny valley feeling. The balance between realistic parts and stylized parts has to be so perfect to make it look nice. If I was trying to learn how to make semi-realistic art from scratch, I'd probably do something like this. First, learn to draw realistically to the point where realistic drawing becomes fairly natural. Then start looking at semi-realistic artists that you like and see what they're doing that makes their art different to realism. Maybe they have more anime-ish proportions, or they use a certain mood in their colours, or there's a certain signature thing that they add. If you like some of those stylizations, try to mix some of them into your realistic work. So, basically, start with realism as your base, and twist it in an appealing way. I wouldn't just try to learn semi-realism by itself, because it's just way too complicated. End Me asks, How do you stay motivated in doing art? Well, sometimes I don't feel like drawing at all, and I don't draw in those times. I just go and do something else. I don't have that much of an issue though, I suppose, because drawing is by a long way my favourite thing to do, and I'll usually choose to draw over just about anything else. If you struggle though, it can help to eliminate distractions. I draw in a room with just a desk and my drawing stuff. I leave my switch downstairs, the TV is downstairs. Anything that might distract me is far enough away that I'm just too lazy to go and set it up. So that way, I can focus on drawing a lot more. Enmi also asks, Any tips on regaining old art skills after not drawing for a long time? I know this issue real personal, because, like I said, I stopped drawing for quite a few years while I was studying philosophy. And then I came back to drawing. After that, it felt like I was starting all over again. In truth, that is what I was doing. A completely fresh start. And if I were you, I'd treat it like that. Don't think about getting back to where you used to be. Try to set off in a completely different way. Try following different tutorials or using different methods, maybe trying a different style. A big part of getting back to art is not being depressed that you've lost a lot of the skills that you had before. And the best way to avoid feeling that way is just to do something different to what you were doing before then there's no way that you can compare. What's my favourite food? I love pizza, with pepperoni on it. Alexandra asks, how do I keep my shading clean? Because when I try to go a bit towards semi-realistic, I keep over-blending things, and the end it looks messy and muddy. Try not to use the smudge tool, and don't use an airbrush. Use a soft round brush like this one, or even a harder brush like this one, and don't focus at all on blending. Put all your colours and values down on the canvas first, without blending anything. If everything is accurate, it should look pretty cool even without the blending. Then you can go in and just blend one or two bits here and there. If you show me some work in Discord, Alex, maybe I can give you some more specific advice. Kamal asked me, do I have a pet? No. I love cats, and when I was a kid I had one, but I don't have one now. Last question, it's another question from WoW, and he asked me, how old am I? I'm 29. Almost 30, so thanks for the reminder on that one. Okay, well that's every question that you guys had for me. If you got any other questions, leave them in the comments and I'll give you some more answers. Thanks everybody for playing with me and asking all these questions. Until next time, do all those things for me, and have a nice day.